Hello ladies and gentlemen, what's up? Welcome to another episode of Phenomenal Views. I'm your host, Nick Smith, and this is my review for the 17th episode of Gotham. <coughs> now with my playover, I will actually be able to stay caught up. <coughs> so this episode is called The Red Hood. Now as soon as I seen this, I was like, wait, wait, they're already going to do the Joker thing? We just met him like a week ago. There's no way he could be doing the Red Hood thing now. Maybe like in a couple years. <coughs> I don't know, maybe like in the third season... Or whenever they probably I don't know if they'll even have Joker become the Red Hood, um, but it was it was a pretty cool episode. What it is, it's pretty much this gang who was robbing, uh, getting ready to rob a bank. This guy pulls out a Red Hood and he puts it on. I was like, what? This guy's the Red Hood? This guy's the Joker now? And no, it was actually this guy who was wearing the Red Hood, and how he was pr he pretty much said, "We're robbing the bank. We're not robbing your people's money. We're rob we're robbing the government's money." So when they start doing this, a cop tries to shoot him, and he presumes the fact that this hood is luck. I can't get shot. And everyone's like, oh, the cop was just nervous. You know, he missed. Like, the hood makes him cocky, and the hood makes him think he's unstoppable. So <clears throat> with this, they're, they keep counting down the seconds when they run out of time. They run outside. The hood throws the money up in the sky, and the gang's like, wait, what the heck are you doing? And then he, they get away. It was a good distraction. Now, with the way how they're doing this, this kind of fits the Red Hood character because the Red Hood is pretty much like Batman, but he kills. Like, with, uh... <clears throat> like, the Red Hood believes that crime will never stop, but he believes in if you control it, you can't get rid of it, but you can control it. And that's kind of... This kind of, I can imagine, fitting the Red Hood's character. Um, so with this, uh, all of a sudden... We are introduced to Jim and Harvey Bullock, who are looking at the scene and pretty much looking at it as they're a Robin Hood. Someone says that they're doing a Robin. A woman at the bank actually said it was like he he was kind of nice. He he wasn't threatening us, and he said he wasn't stealing our money. He was stealing the bank's money. <clears throat> kind of sounds like a Robin Hood thing. But they're like, no, he's a criminal. They just did that to create a diversion. That was a good diversion, though. So then we are then we uh, are introduced uh, to. A friend of Alfred's named Reggie, who used to work with him uh, back back in the old back in the old days, and so you know uh, when he meets him, uh, Alfred op uh, <clears throat> Alfred allows him to you know stay there, and Bruce even meets him, and they have a they have a pretty good you know bond. So that that was pretty good. Um, and now in this, we find out that, that the reason the Red Hood Gang, that they're actually, that's what they're called in this episode, the Red Hood Gang, what they're, they're called that because of the way how the guy took over. So they tricked the alarm off because of a week before. And this is how they find out where to, this is how they catch, how they find out where they can find him. Uh, he was wearing a, a shirt. He was wearing like his employer's uniform and he went to the bank and a smoke bomb went off in the trash. The bank didn't think anything of it. They find that he works at this auto shop. They decide to go there. Well, um, they decide, they decide to go there and it shows us at the bank or not the bank, but it shows us at the car place and it shows the whole entire gang. He's like, you know, you know, that was good. You know, we need to do this again. You know, this hood, like he keeps bragging about how unstoppable the hood is. And then he's like, whoever owns the hood should be leader. All of a sudden he gets shot. He takes the hood. It's the, uh, the old guy. His name is Destro. I think his name, it's something like that. It was, it's something like that. And I was like, that's not Destro, but it might, it might just be, it might just be nothing. So now he is the new red hood. So, with this, we after this, we actually come to Fish, who actually gets taken up to the high office, and she's like, she talks to this doctor, which now, I'm not going to lie, I thought this guy was Hugo Strange, either him or the main doctor, because the doctor likes to take body parts and attach them to other people. I was like, he's experimenting on people. That's got to be Hugo Strange, but it's not Hugo Strange. It's this other, it's Dr. Dolmacher. And so and Fish is like, you know, being difficult. He's like, okay, here's what we'll do. Until the doctor gets back, you take a shower and I'll get you some clean clothes. So when, after uh, after all this is going up, it's setting up. This was really good build up. And next we come to Penguin, who the club is not going so well ever since he took over. 
they ran out of booze. And apparently all those vodka bottles are not vodka, it's just water. So then we... Penguin decides he's going to talk to Moroni. Even though Moroni is the last person he should talk to, and Butch warns him of this, and he talks about, me and Fish put our blood, sweat, and tears into this place. That's why it succeeded. And it didn't. It used to be used for cockfighting. And so it, it shows how much passion Fish and Butch had for the place. <clears throat> and because Butch works for the Penguin now, <clears throat> he says that Fish got what she deserved. Now... Gordon does Gordon and them Gordon and Bullock do come to the place Gort, Gordon is looking around and Harvey opens a refrigerator and he finds a beer and he's like what someone else will drink it if I don't um then they find the body and then we're come to the Red Hood gang again who does the exact same thing and he tries to be funny like how the last guy was and he throws the money to the people and this is where they get the name of the Red Hood gang. It fits the Red Hood's character, and I thought that was a very ingenious idea. I was like, okay, that's that's cool. They're not killing people, but they're trying to... They're kind of being like Jason Todd, except, you know, without the anger issues. Um, when they do a robbery, he doesn't get shot. And so, you know, he, he thinks that the mask is good luck. And, you know, after all of this, um... Gordon and Bullock do get a witness, and they do watch the tape, and they see that he did it again, that he gave the money to the people. So here's something that's interesting. Uh, when I seen this post on Facebook, it said Bruce is fighting with someone. It's not Alfred. Who is it? Alfred and Bruce have been training. Reggie decides to train Bruce a little bit. He's like, he, he teaches him to like hit harder and to use his hips because that's where the strength comes from. What's her name? And Arrow, uh, who's Talia Al Ghul's sister, I'm guessing, I don't know if that's actually canon, said to Laurel, use your hips. That's where the power comes from. So he keeps, uh, Bruce keeps hitting him and he's like, come on, hit me harder, hit me harder, hit me harder. And he keeps pushing Bruce down and he's like, Bruce is like, you're bigger than me, so use that to your advantage. Use your knee. Like he's tell he's teaching Bruce how to take down an enemy who's bigger than him. And I thought, okay, that was really genius. He's te he teaches Bruce how to take someone down who's bigger than him. Use their height to his advantage. And I was like, that is really good. That's really genius. But it shows that Reggie is still the old person that he used to be, where Alfred comes in and sees it, and Alfred has changed. Alfred is not who he used to be. And Reggie... Reggie kind of notices. He's like, you're not the same person that you used to be, are you? And he's like, no. We are then co we then go to Penguin, who's actually trying to pull off a heist to get money from Falcone, or Maroni. All of a sudden, the cops show up and arrest the people. Butch shows up. He's like, what are you doing here? The cops got here. Yeah, I have a few cops. I, I make sure to have a few to help run the place. He gave, he set up a bust to help get Cobblepot booze. Which I thought that was pretty funny. Um, so, here's something. We finally see Barbara. And, and in my notes, Barbara is drinking in the morning, of course. She's still... She's still letting Ivy and Selena live here. Now, this I thought this was really cool. I thought... This I thought was really good. Um, when Barbara is drinking... Selena looks a little concerned, like, okay, it's it's really early in the morning. You shouldn't be drinking this much. And it reminds me of Spanglish, where Adam Sandler walks up to his mom, and he's like, it's not even noon. It is now. <clears throat> she was drinking vodka, I think. So then she decides she's going to help Selena and Ivy dress better. And then she has a, a glass of red wine. And I put in my notes, and I quote, Stop drinking! Barbara, seriously, stop drinking. We get it. You're depressed. There's little children around. Stop drinking! But unfortunately, no matter what Barbara does, Selena will not, does not want to change. Selena wants to stay herself, no matter what she is given. If it, it's given to by Bruce, she doesn't want it. Barbara, she doesn't care. Barbara, so Gordon and Harvey decide instead of going after the main guy from the Red Hood gang because their witness gave him up, they decide that they're going to follow the gang member and have him lead them to the rest of the gang. And it was a very good plan. 
Fish decides that it's time she asks about the stolen body parts. He's going to give her a task. He's he, She's basically asking why is he taking body parts. He's going to tell her why. He was going to take both of her eyes. He's like, I can take both of your eyes and throw you down in the basement and see if you can rule then. Or I can just kill you right now and take your eyes later. She's like, you forgot about option three. She actually takes her eye, her own eye out and stomps on it. And the doctor's like, no, what are you doing? Stop, don't do that. She defeated him. She's. I honestly thought she was going to kill all three of them. I was like, dude, you don't mess with fish. She spooned out her own eye. I was like, ah, oh, oh, that's brilliant, but it's, ah, oh, it hurt. So, with this, we do we do get another scene with Alfred and Reggie, and actually Bruce. And in this scene, it shows exactly how different Alfred has changed because of how Reggie still is. Reggie is still the same way he was. Alfred has not. And Alfred does not. Alfred actually... Um... Alfred says to says to Reggie that it's because of Bruce changed Alfred. Bruce changed Alfred. Alfred is the way he is today because of Bruce. And it really shows that he's become pretty much like his second father. And it really shows how much Alfred cares about Bruce. And how he wants to stay the way he is and not go back to what he used to be. And so this puts the difference between Alfred and Reggie. And Alfred's like... I'll pack you, I'll pack your, I'll clean, I'll have your clean, clothes clean by tomorrow morning. I'll give you some food and I'll send you on your way. So, <clears throat> we now come back to uh, Gordon and Harvey tracking the Red Hood gang. We see a guy who is part of the Red Hood gang. He goes up to his boss. He's like, I, I need the hood. It, it's, it brings me luck. He's wanting to impress his girlfriend because she's causing she's calling him a loser and she wants to leave him. He figures, if I rob the bank tomorrow, my girlfriend sees me in the hood, she'll reward me. And he's like, and he basically says, the only way that you're going to get this off me is if you kill me. And he does. He kills him and he takes the hood. Actually, no, no, no. He doesn't kill him. He shoots him, but... When Harvey is interviewing him, he's like, I need, I need a hospital. I'm going to die of blood loss. It's like, yeah, you don't need to worry about, right that, about that right now. You need to tell me where your gang is and what he's doing. He's like, can I please get the hospital? And they eventually do give him the hospital. We do get another scene, and after this we go back to the Iceberg Lounge. I'm calling it the Iceberg Lounge, okay? It's not Cobble Pots. It's the Iceberg Lounge. And so they're talking about how... He's like, you know what? I kind of penguin says how he kind of misses fish. He's like, I I kind of miss her. It's not our friends who define us, but our enemies. It's because of her that he is the man who he is today, and he thanks her for it. I guess. We then we we come to another scene where Alfred is sneaking downstairs, and Reggie is stealing from them. And he's like, I could have just given you the money. He stabs Alfred, and I was like, no, you better not die. Alfred better not die. He was bleeding to death. They do eventually, they do get him to the hospital. And, um, and when they get him to the hospital, while this is going on, the Red Hood tries to rob another bank, but the cops, because the cops were tailing him, it eventually comes back to bite them in the butt because the guy wearing the hood gets shot and killed, revealing that the hood wasn't magic after all. It was just, they were lucky. After this, Jim finds out that Alfred has been shot in the hospital, and he goes to comfort Bruce. And it shows, and once again, I know I keep commenting about this, but I'm really liking how strong they're building the relationship between Gordon and Bruce. It's like how it was in Batman Begins when Bruce's parents were shot. Gordon was comforting him. He's like, you can call me Gordon. It's okay. Or in Arkham Asylum, when you're in one of Scarecrow's other dreams, you hear Officer Gordon, he's like, He's like, look, my, my, he's like, call me Gordon. Uh, do you need anything? Can I get you anything to drink? And we have, they're giving us these more moment to moments with Bruce and Gordon, and it really works. And I'm really glad they're doing this and setting it up right. So after this, we come to Reggie, who is in a board meeting with Wayne Enterprises. Reggie is a, is an assassin hired by Wayne Enterprises to kill Bruce. And Reggie's like, you know, he he's just a kid. 
He's a good kid. They don't care. They don't like that because, I, and I forgot to mention this, in the beginning of the episode, it did its normal recap, and it was showing how Bruce found out that some of the stuff that Wayne Enterprises was doing, that wasn't legal, that wasn't right. And Bruce was going to take care of that. Not if he's dead. They don't want Bruce coming in and snooping around. They want things to stay the way they are, and they don't like it. They will kill Bruce if they have to. And it's that same woman that he's talked to. She's like... You'll, we'll pay you, and I trust we'll never see you again. And he's like, you know, he's he's just a kid. He He's just a kid. You don't need to do this. And the episode ends. And I thought this was a really good episode. It makes you... This episode made you care more and more about the people. And they kept giving hints at us of what will eventually come in the future. But guys, this has been another episode of Phenomenal Views. Put in the comments below, what was your favorite part about Gotham episode 17? If I'm correct. Yes, Gotham episode 17. Hit that like button, share this to your friends, talk about how, hey, guess what, guys? I've got news on the newest Gotham episode. You don't. I do. Ha ha. Make fun of your enemies. Show this to your enemies. Tell them how you're better than them. Or, or do something. I don't know. But hit that like button and subscribe. Guys, have a fantastic day.